Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another video. All right, so today for me, it is Saturday, February 26th, but you are watching this on Sunday, the 27th. But today for me is a very special day. Why, you may ask? It is Juno's third birthday. It is my baby boy's fur baby. It's his birthday. Now, if you own one of my calendars, you will know that because his birthday is marked on the calendar. Um, so it is his birthday. Look how cute he is. That's a portrait that was done by one of my fellow viewers, Ben Martin. He did a portrait for Juno. I should try and get him to do a portrait for Echo for me too, and I can put him on the other side here. Um, but today's his birthday. He turns three. I've already spoiled him rotten with special food this morning and all kinds of dog treats. So um, before I get started with what I'm working on today, it's going to be a special video just for Juno. Um, I wanted to mention a few things. The Fluid Art Escape workshop in Naples, Florida that I am doing with Tammy Anderson is almost full. Um, so you may or may not know we are doing a workshop in Naples, Florida this July, July 9th and 10th. It is a Saturday and Sunday. Um, all of the Saturday classes are full, the Sunday morning class is full, and the Sunday evening class has about six spots left. It's about six or seven, something like that, last time I checked, and that is it. We will be officially sold out. So if you are interested in attending the class or want more information about the class, you can email us at fluidartescape at gmail.com. So don't delay because that's it. Um, we're almost full and it's only still February, the end of February. So there's still four months before the class is even to begin and we're almost sold out. So we cannot be um, more grateful to everyone who has signed up. For those of you who have signed up for the class, I have sent out an email to all the, all the um, attendees, people who are attending, with all the details, full details of what you need to know, I've sent an email out to everybody. So keep an eye out for your emails. The next thing um, I wanted to mention is my wood rounds. I got my stock in a couple of days ago. And I don't know if you saw it. I would have posted it on Instagram um, and on the YouTube community page. Um, I'm already half sold out. So if you are interested in wood rounds, um, you can email me at canelaseraco at gmail.com. I will try to remember at the end of this video to show them to you. They are just sitting here on the shelf and there's half left. I literally sold out uh, out of my four inch squares within the evening. Um, they were all gone. Um, so if you are interested, um, place an order or email me for um, pricing inquiries. Um, because once they sell, I won't be getting any more in for maybe three to four months, I'm not even sure. Because I live so much further away from my supplier now, it makes it extremely hard for me to get supplies from her for um, more product. So just keep that in mind. I cannot easily get them like I used to when I lived in Innisfil. All right, so today's video I'm gonna be doing is a cutout of Juno. So this is a uh, hardboard uh, cutout, wood cutout, and um, it's shaped as a husky. I had my supplier cut it out for me a while back, and I just never got around to um, doing anything with it. So I figured what better time to do something with this than on Juno's birthday. So I am going to be resining this beauty um, and using the colors of Juno. So he's white and silver. So I'll be using white and silver to uh, decorate this. So I'm gonna get myself set up. I'm gonna bring you guys down on the puppy and we'll get started. Be right back. All right, so here we have here the Husky. And so first things first is you wanna decide which way you want it to face. So I want him facing this way. So I'm going to tape the back. I'm gonna show you guys super quick how I tape the back of these wooden pieces. 
So I've got my uh, green tape here. It's just from the dollar store and I find it works extremely well. Um, you don't need to go out and buy like that expensive 3M frog tape or anything like that. Um, I've been using dollar store tape for years and it has never failed me. All right. So what you want to do obviously is cover every inch of the back of the wooden piece. All right. And I'm going to just keep going and speed you guys up for a little bit. So I've taped the back. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take my finger and I am going to rub it against the edge of the piece here. You want to make sure that the tape adheres to the edge. You can use your finger, you can use a popsicle stick, um, but just make sure you want to rub your finger against the edge so that you make sure it's sticking really well. I don't know if you can see, but you can, can see the outline of the puppy. All right. So after this comes the fun part, <laughs> the not so fun part. All right, so that is now pressed. So now what you wanna do is you wanna cut it out. You want to cut all the excess off. How do you do that? I use uh, a little knife, exacto knife, cut, cutting knife, whatever you want to call it. And so what you can do is either put it on a piece of cardboard and just put it down and trace around it. Um, or sometimes I just actually like to put it up. And then what I do is I will take the knife and I will literally trace out the dog or the shape or whatever the shape is you're tracing out. So as you can see, I am simply just running my blade across the edge of, see, perfectly clean. And so you're gonna do that all the way around. See? It, it it's time consuming, but you get a perfect clean cut every time, right? So there you go. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Little piece at a time. So let's go. I'm not left-handed, but if I put my left hand there, you won't see what I'm doing. There we go. So basically, poke a little hole right on the edge and just glide your knife across the edge of the shape. All right, so I'm going to continue doing this. I'm going to speed you guys up. See, look how easy that is, right? And I'll be right back. So that took about maybe 10 minutes. It's tedious, but it is necessary. So there you go. Perfectly clean on the back. Okay, maybe when you're done cutting it, you want to just, you know, one more time, run your fingers around the edges. All right, just to make sure that the tape, you know, didn't kind of unstick itself from the wood as you were cutting it. All right, so just ensure you rub it all right so there you go so that is ready to go now so i shall put my little juno 
I just use these cups here. You can use whatever you want. Um, I find these cups are really useful and uh, resin peels off of them super easily, which makes it great because I can reuse the cups. I reuse these a lot because the resin just peels right off of them. All right, so my choice of resin, of course, is crystal resin. All right, so if you saw my previous video, I did a full tutorial on how I um, resin my canvases, but it also tells you how I mix up the resin and all very important tips. So you might want to check out the previous video. I believe it's video 429, I think. Um, so yeah, check that video out. Um, it is equal parts of resin and hardener. Okay. You want to make sure you are wearing gloves. I don't want to, I'm not going to repeat a lot of, I'm not going to say a lot of this because it's basically repeating everything I literally just did in my previous video. So for those of you who saw my previous video, I do not want to bore you all. But uh, as I mentioned, check out my previous video. All right, I've got my heat gun. Definitely need that. All right. And because Juno is white and silver, I'm going to be using a white base. I'm going to do it all white and I'm going to be using my crystal resin pigment here. So it's probably going to need a good stirring. But yep, there you go. So white is going to be the base. All right. Now, I don't need to prime this at all. It's fine the way it is. It's hardboard wood, so it's not like MDF where it needs to be primed. It does not need to be primed. And then I'm going to be using a silver and a sparkle white pigment powders. This was a paste. These are pigment powders. These are from Artie Sue, which I don't believe she sells anymore. Um, I don't think she's still in business. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you cannot buy those anymore. And this, what did I just drop? Oh, my nothing. This is going, I'm going to be using silver. It's by, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Mixall. And I got this from Bear Wood Supply. Um, so you can purchase these on their website and you can also save, um, get a discount. I will put that information in the description below. So um, I'm going to be using that silver and that is um a paste i'm going to get started i'm going to make up mix up some of my resin uh, i don't need a lot for this little guy i'm not going to measure i don't know how to measure i just make enough i'm going to make a few extra little bit extra because i want to finish off my coasters if you again saw my previous video uh, i was working on those coasters with the excess resin that i had from that video all right so I'm going to speed you guys up while I mix my resin and I'll be right back. so it's all mixed up so the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little uh, shot glasses or medicine cups or whatever you want to call them and I need uh, just two of them actually one for the silver one for the steel and the sparkle white I'm going to actually add it into the white so what I want to do is let me explain something first actually if you are using a powder, okay, you want to put the powder into the cup first before putting the resin in. So I'll probably just use that much. All right, and I'm gonna put it here into the little cup and I'll tell you why. Because now that the powder is in the cup, when I pour the resin in, it'll cover it. And when I start stirring, I ain't gonna get a poof of powder in my face. Um, which is no good either. Um, so put the powder in first before adding resin to the cup. See, now it's fully covered and I don't have to worry when I mix it that I'm going to get a cloud of powder or pigment in my face. You see that? So give it a good stir. Give it a good mixing. 
Now, if you're using a pigment or a paste, then I do it the other way around. I will put my resin in the cup first. That's probably even a lot. I probably didn't even need that much in that little cup. A little goes a long way when you're just doing little, I'll show you, little designs. All right, so now this, I'm gonna get resin all over it. I shall, I've never used this one before, so this is going to be interesting. I might need a little more, we shall see. All right, so there you go. And I'm going to, oh, oh wow, that is beautiful. Look at this. It's like a metallic silver, very nice. Look at that, I like it. Very pretty. Silver, just like my Juno. All right, mix that up really well. So we've got the silver and the darker steel color here. And then I'm going to put some in here. I should technically be putting the powder in first because I literally just said to put it in first, but I wanna mix the white first um, because I wanna see, I need to see how pigmented the uh, white's gonna be first. All right, I'm going to reserve some just in case I need some extra. If not, it's going to go into my coasters. I need a bigger stick than that, than those little ones. All right. So I'm going to give this a quick stir because I haven't used it since before I moved. All right, and you don't need much. So I'm literally, basically, it's just the tip of the popsicle stick that has uh, white on it. There you go, okay? And I shall put it in here. If you need more, do not put this stick in there. Get a clean stick to add more, okay? This should be enough to cover the Husky. And you want to definitely scrape and not get it all over your fingers, but you want to scrape all that off, okay? For sure. Scrape that off. All right. Scrape the sides and continue mixing. All right. So you can see it is pretty opaque, very opaque. So that is what I want. All right, we'll put the lid back on that so nothing falls into that. And then I'm going to take my little popsicle stick and I'm going to carefully, because this stuff just blows everywhere, because it's like a very, very fine powder. I'm going to put, I hope you can see that, probably going to need a little bit more because I want Juno to sparkle. So I shall put that there and put the lid on. All right, and very carefully, I'm going to take my resin and overlap it over the sparkle powder. And now carefully and slowly mix it. I'm probably gonna need more. It might not even show. It might not show. I typically use this stuff in the clear resin I thought I'd try and make my, my white sparkle, but maybe that's not enough. I'm gonna add a little more, and if it doesn't sparkle, then so be it. I could add glitter. Actually, I, I could add glitter, um, but I don't want to over glitterify, glitterify him. Um, so let's try that, and it is what it is. I don't know if that's gonna do anything or not. Ooh, I've got little dust particles flying everywhere. I don't think that really did anything. I could be wrong, but I don't see it. I really don't wanna add glitter to it. So these here are gonna be glitter, glitter enough. I don't know, it's hard to see. 
Should I add glitter? I don't know. Nah, whatever. All right. So now I'm going to, let me see, let me pour some on here. All right. So I'm going to pour my white all around him. All right, save some just in case. All right, and now I'm going to actually just double glove just in case and get a rip in my glove. I don't want resin on my hands. And I'm going to spread this all around and you want to get all the edges. You have to rub it against the sides. So I'm gonna continue this. I'm gonna speed you guys up and I'll be right back. All right, so he is fully covered and I did rub all the edges. Now you could probably see the edges are still a little black. I'm not concerned about the edges because when it's dry, I'm actually going to take a silver uh, metallic marker and I'm going to do the edges in silver. So I'm not worried about that. All right, now I'm gonna get my heat gun and I'm gonna pop all these bubbles and warm up the resin. Once I plug my heat gun in. Won't work if it's not plugged in, Kanawa. All right, so it's warmed up. Now I'm going to think about where like his paws are white so I don't want to do too much down here by his paws and he typically has like a really dark stripe along his back so I'm going to use I'll probably just end up blowing this everywhere but I'm gonna try and do um you know stick with his markings see there's a lot of silver in here which is fine I will put it in a mold and use it in something else. This is why I say have some silicone molds kicking around because you never know when you're going to need them for some extra resin to put into your molds. All right. And maybe here. I'm going to leave his head for now. Let me do the silver. He's basically white and silver all the way through, but his belly and legs are more white than anything. So basically there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm going to end up blowing this all out. And we'll see what happens. This is why I say keep a reserve because I might need more white. All right, so now I'm going to heat it up. And as I'm heating it up, it's going to blend it all in. So just watch. Isn't he cute? There's even a few little cells forming. So I think it's adorable. Now, right here on the tip of his tail, I can see the wood. So that is not good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drip some white over that just to get it fully covered. Oh, there's a little spot here too. 
All right, like I said, I'm not concerned about the sides, just the top. Let me see. Oh, he's so cute. I love the way that turned out. I'm just wondering down here with his legs if I should just blow or heat up this part off a little bit or just try and blend it a bit more. I didn't put any silver on him down here. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I went across. Do you see what I did? I went across. I went whoop and I went across. Shouldn't have done that. He's so cute and I left his face white because his face is white. He's got a white snout and a white mouth so I did not want to have any of that in there and you know what now that I'm looking at it there's glitter all over it so I'm happy with that. Now this is going to oh he's so cute I love it. It's so cute it's just his colors. All right so I'm gonna leave it and I will be back in the morning to show you guys how I peel the tape off the back. Um, and now with this excess resin, what you can do, I shall show you. I've got this silicone mold here. Um, and I am, oh, see, I still have some clear in here. So let's see, should I start with silver? Um, never waste resin. Find something to put it in, all right? So I am going to pour it into this ring holder. I'm gonna start with silver. And then I'm going to do some white. And then the steel gray. So this is a good way to use up any excess resin. Find a mold, a coaster, something to put it in. And tomorrow, this will be, uh, I'll be able to unmold it and show you guys. Put some more silver. No, I, oh, <laughs> I was going to say I should do a layer of white first before I do silver. And just like that, my white is pretty much empty. So always find something to use your extra resin in. All right, silver is empty. And I have some more space, so I'm just going to mix it in with the rest of this uh, steel. All right, so those are empty. Those are done. Let me see. I can put a little bit more just to get to the top. And just like that, I have used up all my extra resin. Look at that, finished. Now I squeeze the tip at the bottom to make sure the resin gets right down to the tip or what you can do is, where is my skewer? Here we go. And I will literally just put it down and poke the bottom because I want the resin to get right down to the tip. There we go. Actually, that probably made a nice design in there actually too. There we go. I'm going to clean this off so I can reuse it. And there you have it. So I'm going to let this cure. I'm gonna make sure there's no doggy hairs in it, although it would be fitting because he is a doggy, but it doesn't mean I want doggy hair in it. And this will be ready to unmold tomorrow. And I will be back in the morning and I will show you guys how to peel the tape off and how I'm gonna finish the edges. So that's it for now. I'll be back in the morning. All right, everybody, it is the next morning and this beauty is dry, stuck, but dry. All right, and look at all the resin drips underneath. Now, remember, don't touch the top. Never touch the top. 
always just hold it from the back or the side. All right, so I'm just gonna get this cup off. And this is what I was saying, with these cups here, see, they peel off the table super easily, but here's the best part. They clean off so well. Um, I've used these little glasses, shot glasses before, um, and they do not peel off. They actually, when you try and peel it off, it actually breaks, cracks the cup, and then they're rendered useless. So this is why I love these, because they just peel off the rim so easily. Look at that. And then I just reuse them all the time. Look how cleanly that comes off. And there you go, four cups to reuse for another project. I love peeling resin drips. Look how pretty they are. All right, back at the task at hand here. Okay, let's move this over for now. So the doggy is done and it is so cute. I love it. He's so cute. I'm gonna put him on my ledge, on my shelf behind me. So what we wanna do now is peel the resin drips off. <clears throat> if you saw my last video, which was the resin tutorial video, you um, would have seen, let me plug this in, you would have seen how I peel the resin drips off my canvases. So I will show you super quickly, again, not touching any part of the top of the resin. I will show you guys quickly how I peel the resin drips off the back of these. So what you wanna do is you wanna heat up the back of the piece, not the side, not the front, just the back, and you will see it'll peel off like butter. Here we go. All right, then I will find an edge of the tape here, and you will see how easily It peels off. Look at that. Look how clean that is. A little bit here, but that's fine. It's the back anyway. I'm not overly concerned about that. And remember, if you find it hard to peel, it's because it's not warmed up enough. So actually this is peeling off pretty easily. Oh, a little stuck a little there. So I'm going to continue this. I'll speed you guys up and I'm going to continue peeling the rest of this off. The tape has been peeled off. There's a little few white spots here on the back, but overall it is actually pretty perfect. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it did not warp at all, okay? So this is why I really like these hardboard rounds. Um, so the 12 inch rounds that I sell, you can make clocks out of them. Um, this guy did not warp at all, still flat as a board. Um, which I really, really like. All right, so um, the next thing I wanted to show you guys is I have this silver metallic marker. This is from Loli Vefi. And I've tried all kinds of markers. I've tried markers from uh, Sharpie, uh, Krylon markers. Um, I have them all. And by far, my favorite is the Loli Vefi markers um, because I find that they're really vibrant and rich in color. So these are my go-to. You can find them on the Loli Vefi website. And of course, as usual, you can save 10% off using code Canela10. So because my Echo or my Juno Boy, not my Echo Boy, my Juno Boy is silver, I am going to, you could leave this as is if you want, or in my case, I'm going to take this silver marker and I'm just going to um, paint there you go, the edges with my marker. I'm gonna go around the whole thing and I, look how, look how pretty that is, you see that? It really adds that final touch to the piece. And then every so often, I like to dab it to get more of the silver out. Doing these edges I'm not gonna obviously do this whole thing for you guys on camera who wants to see that but I just wanted to do a bit of it to show you guys 
make sure I'm in camera view at least, to show you guys how you can finish it off. So Loli Vefi has silver, gold, white, and black markers. So you can check it out on the website. All right, so here's just an example. All right, I'm just gonna do this, the head here and show you guys. Okay, so there you go. That's what it's gonna look like. He's gonna be all silver all the way around. That way you're covering these spots here like this. So here, let me show you. And it just rolls right on. It's so rich. I love these markers. These are great for outlining coasters or anything, any sort of mold that has an edge on it. Look at that. Look at that. I love it. It's so pretty. All right, so I won't bother to do the rest just yet. I'll do that off camera, but you get the idea. Where's my lid? Here it is. All right, so that's that. And then for those of you, um, if I was selling this, for example, I have what's called a sawtooth hook. I buy these off Amazon in bulk, and then I get these little baggies if I can open it. Goodness gracious. I can't, there we go. <laughs> I get these little baggies from the dollar store. So you get the sawtooth hook and two little screws. All right. I don't want to touch it where I put silver. And I, would, I wouldn't I would put it on. I'd leave that up to the client because you don't know how they want to hang things or even if they want to hang it, right? But I do provide these little hooks and the screws and then they can do whatever they want with it. Either hang it, leave it. Um, lean it up against the wall or a window or whatever. So you would get those with any wood pieces. Um, so there's that. I hope you enjoyed that part. I don't want to touch any of this. See, I did. I touched it, which is fine. I can just go over it. I wanted to unmold this. So you remember last night I poured all my extra resin into this mold because there's no sense in wasting resin. That is just a shame, never waste resin. So let's pull this out. Oh, wow, it's so pretty, look at this. Look how that turned out. Now, this is what I meant by make sure you push like your um, something pointy like this or a skewer of some sort to the bottom because um, there would have been an air bubble and it wouldn't have been as pointy. Uh, definitely not. I've done that before. Do I have one where I can show you? No, I don't. I probably tossed it. So I'm going to flip the mold. There we go. This is from Crystal Resin, by the way. Um, here's another one I had done. A purple one. So, but you see here how it's pointy. So you want to make sure you um, push the resin down to the bottom. Look how cute this is. And if I was wearing my rings right now, I'd show you, but you can put your rings on it. It's a cute little ring holder. All right, my um, coaster molds. Um, so this is the first time I've used these fruit things and I made a mistake. Again, first time I was doing it, so now I know better. I ended up putting the fruit directly onto the mold and then I poured resin into it. What I should have done was poured resin into the mold first and then put the fruit on top of it because what happened now, there's air bubbles in it. You see the air bubble? But not a problem, not a big deal. There's one that's really bad, look at this. <laughs> look, I can actually feel the fruit. So the what happened was the resin wasn't able to get under the fruit. So next time I will pour resin into the mold first, then put the fruit over it and then cover it. But that's okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a dome layer of resin, basically just enough resin to put on the top and fill this in without it spilling over and it'll be perfect. So I shall fix those and I will show them to you uh, in a later video completed. I actually even haven't demolded the, demolded this one. Yeah, so this one has a tiny air bubble right here. So I will fill it and do a dome. But other than that, aren't they super cute? Super cute. I really like the way these turned out. Oh, there's resin on the table. I got to clean that off. But yeah, so same with this one. There's a hole right here. All right. And see, look, there's resin on my table. Not to worry. Nothing a little rubbing alcohol 
cannot fix and clean. All right, so um, that's it. There you have it. I don't know what else to say or what else to show you, um, but I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, I can't wait to just display it on my shelf behind me and maybe when it's Echo's birthday, um, which is in April, I'll do, because um, I have two of these, I'll do one with Echo and he's all black and white. So it would be a little different. It'd be black and white. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to um, put them in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer all your questions. Uh, if you liked the video, please um, give it a thumbs up and comment below. Let me know what you think. If you are new watching and you are not subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate it if you would hit that red subscription button. Don't forget the Fluid Art Retreat. If you want info, email us at fluidartescape at gmail.com. And let me show you the rounds. Hold on. All right, so here are the wood rounds I have left. I actually had double of what you're seeing and half of them sold. So this is what I've got left. I have no four inch squares left. Um, I hope to get more one day, but I don't know when that will be. So I've got eight inch rounds. So eight inch, 10 inch and 12 inch. And then I have four inch rounds for coasters. And then these little um, two and a half inch, which are great for doing things like magnets. So here's an example. I did this little just testing and then I put a 3M magnet on the back. So uh, super cute for magnets or anything small like that. So if you are interested in any of these, this is all I've got left. So, um, you know, I had someone ask me the other day, I need a hundred of the four inch squares. And I said, sorry, I'm completely sold out. And I had like 300 of them when I got my order a couple of days ago and they were just gone. So this is what's left. If you're interested, email me for pricing info and to order at canalaseraco at gmail.com. All right, everybody. So that is it. Happy birthday, sweet boy, Juno. Isn't he cute? I love it. So um, thank you all so much for watching, guys. Until next time, have a good day. Have a good night. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.